Hey, everybody, you're listening to A New Beginning, which is a podcast made possible by Harvest Partners. If this program has impacted you, I'd love to hear from you. So just send an email to me at greg at harvest.org. Again, it's greg at harvest.org. You can learn more about becoming a Harvest Partner by going to harvest.org. Today, Pastor Greg Laurie describes his perspective in seeking to serve the Lord with commitment and without reservation. It's been said, some people are setting the world on fire while others are still looking for a match. God chooses to work when we apply our faith in Him. So it's a willingness to take steps of faith. Listen, it's a willingness to even potentially fail. But I would rather try and fail than never try at all. This is of large organizations are often asked how they got to where they are, as if they stepped right up to the top position. The answer is often, start small, start leading and see if anyone follows. And when a few do, keep at it, work hard, have faith and seek God's will. Well, today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie recalls the development of Harvest Ministries as he and his congregation celebrate 50 years of teaching God's Word to God's people. I have a message I'd like to share with you with the title, Reflecting on the Past, Preparing for the Future. Let's pray. Father, bless this time now as we open your word. We know it's true, and we pray that you will speak to our hearts and help us to gain a greater understanding of your faithfulness to us and also on how to use our faith as we follow you. We commit this time of Bible study to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so yes, we're celebrating 50 years as a church. Uh, The historical backdrop is worth noting. It was 1973 and Richard Nixon was our president. We were leaving Vietnam. The U.S. participation in the Vietnam War was coming to a close. Roe v. Wade was passed by the Supreme Court. Uh, The World Trade Center officially opened in New York City. The top TV shows were All in the Family, the Waltons, and Sanford and Son. And uh, one of the big songs on the Billboard charts was Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. How many of you remember that song? You're old, okay. (laughs) The top movie in the theaters, ironically, was The Exorcist, of all things. And the cell phone was invented. Now, I didn't know this. I thought the cell phone was invented a little later. And now these things have effectively ruined our lives when they put screens on them and all the things you can do on phones. But that phone was affectionately called the brick. And it was like a brick. Had a battery life of four minutes. Uh, (laughs) But you could actually carry a phone around with you and talk on it, which seemed quite revolutionary at the time. And Harvest Christian Fellowship was born. Now, it's hard to pinpoint exactly in time when we were born because before we were a church, we were a little Bible study of young people. So the way it happened, and you've seen the Jesus Revolution movie, you have a sense of it, but I used to hang around at Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa. I was 18 years old. I had my drawing board set up and I would draw my cartoons and all that. And the pastors were all there and they were all about nine to 10 years older than me. And one day there was a discussion in this room. And the discussion was, who's going to go to Riverside this week? Now, this Bible study in Riverside at All Saints Episcopal Church was started by Lonnie Frisbee, who was a youth pastor at Calvary Costa Mesa. I went up with them a few times there. And it was around 300 young people attending. Then Lonnie moved away. And so it was being handed around to different Calvary Chapel pastors. So who's going to go this week? One said, well, I went last week. I don't want to go again this week. Another said, well, I'm going next week, so I don't want to go this week. No one wanted to do it. And I said, I'll go. (laughs) And I went up, and when I arrived in Riverside, uh, in my trusty old beat-up Corvair, uh, 
I went up to one of the elders that was there and they said, hi, I'm Greg Laurie from Calvary Chapel. I'm here to speak tonight. And he says, no one told me you were coming. Well, I'm here to speak. He says, well, I don't know that you're here to speak. I, why don't you just go sit over there and I'll let you know. Okay. So I sat there and waited. Well, no one else showed up because I was there to speak and I spoke that night. Then I went back the next week and after a while I was starting to grow this little Bible study. So I'm probably around 19 and, um, these kids start calling me Pastor Greg. I'm thinking, I can't be their pastor. I've only been a Christian two years. And I, I know so little. And I was looking for someone to take it over. No one wanted to take it over. So it began to dawn on me that we were becoming a church. We were doing a startup church when I'd never even heard of a startup church. And uh, so it was a little Bible study that turned into a church that eventually got our own property and then we uh, fast forward to today and here we are. But as I look back over the years, two words sort of pop out to me. One is faithfulness and the other is faith. On the part of God it's been His faithfulness to us and on our part it's been a willingness to take steps of faith. First there's the faithfulness of God. Over the years we've weathered mighty storms. We've withstood withering attacks from the enemy. But as Jesus promised to the church, you are the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Now have you ever thought about the context of that? The gates of hell. Gates don't attack you. The idea is you're storming an enemy fortress. Think of a castle that belongs to the enemy. You're storming the castle and the gates won't stop you. So that's what he's saying. They won't prevail against you as we're advancing and moving forward as followers of Jesus Christ. But God has been faithful to us to protect us and to guide us and to provide for us each step of the way. Second Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And God's done that for us. Lamentations 3.22, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Great is your faithfulness. And we have found that to be true. And God called us to start this church and we've watched it grow and we give him the glory. But that brings us to the faith part. If I were to sum up what we've done all these years in one word, it would be faith. We took steps of faith. You see, faith is seeing something before it has actually happened. It's been said faith builds a bridge from this world to the next. I don't claim any special revelations from God as to how this all came about. I never had a detailed blueprint of where it was going to lead. But I can say along with Scripture, as it says in Psalm 16:5, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a beautiful inheritance. Does that make sense? The lines have fallen in pleasant places. Sometimes in life, especially when you're younger, things happen to you that make no sense. Why did God let this happen? Why didn't God let that happen? This doesn't make sense to me now, but then you know what 2020 hindsight is you get further down life's road. I mean really further down life's road, way down in the shadow where the light isn't. And then you look back on your life, you can see that God has been in control all the time. And the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places and indeed Romans 8.28 has been true for you that all things have worked together for good to those that love God. And so what is faith? We say use faith, have faith, apply faith. Well, what is faith? According to the Bible, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Or as the New Living Translation puts it, what is faith? It's a confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It's the evidence of things we cannot yet see. Augustine said, quote, faith is to believe what we do not see and the reward of this faith is to see what we believe, end quote. See, faith is not mere intellectual assent, it's also action. Faith is belief plus action. It's believing God even when the odds are against you. It's taking risks. C.H. Spurgeon, the great British preacher, said, quote, believing and obeying always run side by side. And that's how it goes. You know, you're willing to just see what the Lord will do. And where do we get faith? 
the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when I read the Bible, when I study Scripture, when I memorize the words of this book, my faith will get stronger. And that is why we have always given place to Bible study in all of our services. This is why we always say, bring your Bible with you. And to me, one of the most beautiful sounds is the rustling of Bible pages when I will say to you, or whoever speaking will say, turn in your Bible too. It's not as exciting to hear the swipe of a screen, but it's okay. Because I know some of you are reading the Bible on your phone or your tablet, and that's all good, but I think you also get a proper Bible though. You should and carry it. But you know, as long as you're opening up the Word of God and letting it speak to you, that's where your faith is going to grow. We've always believed that everything should focus around Scripture. Therefore we offer theology without apology. And people will say, well you know, you can't teach these Bible studies and go too in depth. People won't listen to stay for that. Or they, maybe they won't, but I think people develop an appetite for what you feed them. And I think if you are raised on junk food, you're gonna want junk food. But if you have good, nutritious food put in front of you, you'll long for it, you'll desire it. And we believe that God's word is powerful. I don't have to make it relevant. The Bible is relevant. I just need to proclaim it and let God's Word do what it does best. Change lives as it is moved in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Pastor Greg Laurie will have the second half of his message in just a moment. It's a joy to hear when these studies have truly impacted lives. Hi, Pastor Greg. My wife and I listen to you on the radio daily and love your teaching. We also watch most of the movies you've produced, including Johnny Cash, The Redemption of an American Icon. We grew up with Johnny Cash, and this movie made us cry. We also love the movies A Rush of Hope and Jesus Revolution. As we share this message with you, we're still grieving the loss of our grandson, who was killed in a hit-and-run accident. Please keep up the great teaching, as we are so thankful for everything you do. We appreciate hearing how these daily studies are impacting lives, even through painful situations. Would you consider sharing your story? If so, call us and let us know. Call 1-866-871-1144. That's a special number, 866-871-1144. Well, today in a special message, Pastor Greg is highlighting the past 50 years of ministry of Harvest Christian Fellowship and Harvest Ministries. It's a celebration of what God has done and continues to do. So when we started, we were using the cutting edge technology of the day. It was something called the cassette tape. (laughs) And nowadays that seems so silly, cassette tape, but think how revolutionary it was then. Uh, If you wanted to listen to music, you got it on an album. And then there was an eight track, but now here's this cassette tape. Not only can you listen to something on it, but you can record on it yourself. So this was a way we got the Word of God out. And then as time has passed, new platforms come our way. And you have CDs, and then you have streaming, and and all the things that we're using today. And then over the years, we branched out into different things. I think we were one of the first churches, if not the first church, to have a Sunday morning live service on the internet. And uh, I know for our crusades, we were among the first to use it as a gospel communication device. And now we've gotten into films and we've seen how God can use these films. Uh, The Jesus Revolution film has already reached around 25 million people, if not more. And isn't that amazing? We know that ultimately it will probably reach around 100 million people. And last year alone, we saw 72,000 professions of faith. Last year alone, through all of our outreach ministries. Here's a mind-blowing stat. With all the platforms that are out there, where we've used radio and television, we do these one-minute messages on CNN and Fox News. Those have reached hundreds of thousands of people. And people have responded and accepted Christ watching them after watching a one-minute presentation of the gospel. 
But all of our platforms combined together has enabled us in last year to reach an audience, I'm not making this up, one billion people last year. Okay, isn't that amazing? Uh, we've been looking at all the people who have made professions of faith over the last 50 years. In the Harvest Crusades alone, it's around 600,000. If you add in the numbers from our many, many church services and people responding to our various ministries that we have out there, we can say with complete confidence, without any exaggeration, that over the last 50 years, we have seen one million professions of faith. I think realistically it could almost be double that number. But God knows and we're thankful because the Bible says that there's joy in heaven over one sinner that comes to repentance. So we give God the glory for all of these things. So we built our ministry on the principles of Acts 2, 42 to 47. And there we read, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So we've summed it up in an acronym. Well, W-E-L-L. -L. The early church, our church, operates off of this acronym. W, they were a worshiping church. We've always given an important place to worship in our services. Starting with literally me standing up with a microphone leading worship a cappella. How sad that was. <laughs> but we had a limited budget. Okay, so. so then we moved on to guitars and bands and all the great songs that have come throughout the years. So, you know, worshiping the Lord, a worshiping church. But then E stands for an evangelistic church. This is so important. Because some churches grow by church transfer growth. In other words, we don't like this church anymore. We're coming to your church. Okay, fine. But I think the best kind of growth in a church is evangelistic growth. And by that I mean people coming to Christ in the church. Because, because new believers are the lifeblood of the church. You show me a church that doesn't have a constant flow of new believers coming in and I will show you a church that is beginning to stagnate. So we have a choice before us. We can evangelize or we can fossilize. I prefer the former over the latter. So we've always given prominence to that. And as you know, we give invitations in our services all the time for people to come to Christ and they do. So an evangelistic church. Worshiping, W. E, evangelistic. L, number one, a learning church. That's why we always study the Bible together. And lastly, L, a loving church. We've always wanted to be a place where people can feel loved, where they can feel they belong. So it's been done by faith. And you know what? Faith can make the difference between something happening or not happening. God chooses to work when we apply our faith in Him. When the Lord directed the children of Israel to cross over the Jordan River, they had to first get their feet wet. They had to take that step of faith. They didn't part first. First they got in and then the waters parted for them. When fire came down on Mount Carmel, when Elijah was facing off with the prophets of Baal, first Elijah had to pray. Jesus could have healed everyone everywhere with just a word. Imagine, Jesus could have said, I'm Jesus. And on the count of three, everyone is healed. And they would have been. But that's not how he worked, is it? He waited for someone to call out to him. Like blind Bartimaeus that heard Jesus was coming up the road. And he said, son of David, have mercy on me. They said, shh, quiet down. You're making too much noise. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and healed him. Or that woman who had that medical problem where she continually was bleeding and she touched Jesus and she was healed. Both instances of faith being applied. See, when we don't reach out to God in faith, not much happens. It's been said, some people are setting the world on fire while others are still looking for a match. That's a good quote, isn't it? That's not original to me. Some people are setting the world on fire while others are looking for a match. 
So it's a willingness to take steps of faith. Listen, it's a willingness to even potentially fail. But I would rather try and fail than never try at all. And just say, let's see what the Lord will do. Pastor Greg Laurie, giving his perspective on the past 50 years of serving God through Harvest Ministries. And he has more to share as this presentation continues here on A New Beginning. Now, maybe you were surprised that this ministry has seen a million people make professions of faith in Christ. But let me ask you, where do you stand in your relationship with the Lord? Maybe you're feeling you need to make things right with God, like so many people have over the years. Pastor Greg, what would you say to the person who wants to make a change like that today? What I would say is, he's only a prayer way, which means if you will call upon the name of the Lord right now through prayer, He will hear your prayer and answer your prayer. Listen, if you want Jesus Christ to come into your life, if you want him to forgive you of your sin, if you want to know that you'll go to heaven when you die, just pray this prayer right now after me. Just pray, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you're the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. I turn from my sin now, and I choose to follow you. From this moment forward, as my Savior and Lord, as my God and my friend, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And listen, if you have just prayed that prayer and meant those words sincerely, we want to welcome you into the family of God. And let us help you get started walking each day with the Lord. Pastor Greg wants to send you his New Believer's Bible, absolutely free, along with some other helpful resources. They'll help answer your questions and get you started off right as you live for God each day. Just let us know you prayed with Pastor Greg and that you want the New Believer's Bible when you call 1-800-821-3300. We can take your call anytime at 1-800-821-3300. Or just go online to harvest.org and click the words, Know God. You know, so many people have questions about heaven. What will we be doing there? Uh, When we get there, will we know what's going on on earth? Well, Pastor Greg addresses those questions and many more in his new book called As It Is in Heaven. Uh, Pastor Greg, what will a right view of heaven do for us in terms of our outlook in this life? Well, I think there's a couple of things I could say to that. Let me broaden that to the afterlife, because we talk about heaven, but we need to also talk about hell. Hmm. Just as surely as there is a real place called heaven, there is also a horrible place called hell. Hell was not prepared for people. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. Heaven is not for good people and hell for bad people. Heaven is for forgiven people. But the reason I bring up hell is because the Bible says there'll be a future judgment. If I believe there's a final judgment, that will affect me in decisions I make. Now, broadening that to heaven, if I believe there are future rewards, that will affect me in the way I live as well, because the Bible promises that there are rewards in heaven waiting for those that faithfully serve the Lord. The Bible talks about different crowns. There's a crown of life. uh, There's a crown of rejoicing and, and other beautiful things that we will be given in heaven, because Jesus said, and as we faithfully serve the Lord, it's duly noted by the Lord, and he would reward us openly one day. Future rewards, future judgment. When I think of the afterlife, it will affect me in this life. So I've written about this in this book called As It Is in Heaven. I think one of the most important things you can learn to do is to be heavenly minded. Oh, I know I've heard the expression, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Give me a break. The fact is people who are really heavenly minded do the most earthly good. But I think there are people who are so earthly-minded, they're no heavenly good. And by that, I mean they never think of the afterlife. And I think as we think deeply about the next life, it will impact us in this life, in the decisions we make, in the things that we do, in the way that we live, in the way we invest our finances and what we do with our time, and what our priorities are. 
And the Bible actually tells us in Colossians 3 to set our mind on things above. You could translate it this way, think about heaven. It's a good thing to think deeply about heaven. So I've written this new book, As It Is in Heaven, to tell you what the Bible says about heaven and to remind you of this simple fact. It's better than anything you've ever experienced on earth. Take the best experience you've ever had on planet earth. Maybe it was that special moment with a loved one watching the sunset. Maybe it was watching your baby take their first steps. Maybe it was some other thing you can think of. Amplify that a thousand times and you get a glimpse of heaven. You see, heaven is the real thing. Earth is sort of like a pale imitation. You know, earth is sort of like the moon to heaven's sun. It reflects it, and it gives us a glimpse of it, because there are beautiful things you can see on earth, beautiful places you can visit, great experiences you can have, but they're glimpses of something greater that is yet to come. And that's in the afterlife, in heaven. So I'll send you this book, As It Is in Heaven, for your gift of any size as you invest in our ministry and lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. If you want to know more about heaven and you want to know how to be more heavenly minded, order your copy right now of this book that I've written called As It Is in Heaven. Yeah, it's solid biblical insight. You'll be glad you read this new book and we'll send it to you to thank you for your partnership in helping us bring the gospel each day here on A New Beginning. And today is our last opportunity to mention this. So get in touch with your support and be sure to ask for As It Is in Heaven. You can call us anytime, night or day, at 1-800-821-3300. That's 1-800-821-3300. Or just go online to harvest.org. And by the way, Pastor Greg talks more about what's waiting for us in the afterlife in a new podcast available right now at harvest.org and on the Harvest Plus app. Look for the title, As It Is in Heaven, a new podcast at harvest.org, the Harvest Plus app, and on other podcast apps. Well, next time, more insights about the faithfulness of the Lord in our most challenging times. Join us here on A New Beginning with pastor and Bible teacher, Greg Laurie. The preceding podcast was made possible by Harvest Partners, helping people everywhere know God. Learn how to become a Harvest Partner, sign up for daily devotions, and find resources to help you grow in your faith at Harvest.org.